Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. We're going to continue solving the IB questions, paper 2, mechanic. Last time we reached uh, question 7, section E. So uh, we had a, sl uh, a sled. The sled now doesn't have the girl on it. it travels up a snow slope. Okay, so here we have this is the snow slope and there is a sled and the sled is moving upward the angle here is 6.5 and last time we calculated the acceleration of the sled is negative 2 meter per second square the initial speed for the sled the initial was 4.2 meter per second the sled eventually will stop so the final speed zero meter per second i need to find the distance i need to calculate the distance along the slope at which the sledge stops moving so i need to find this distance here the sledge will stop moving delta x. I can use kinematic equation to solve this question. So from kinematic equation, since I have the velocity and I have acceleration, so I can use this equation. V final square equals V initial square plus 2A delta x. In the DP, they use, instead of V final, V final and Instead of V initial, they use U initial plus 2 acceleration times S. The same thing, but I'm, I'm more comfortable with using the simple final and initial. So V final is 0 equals V initial 4.2 square plus 2 acceleration is negative 2 times delta X. So we do the calculation. Take this to the other side. It will be negative. 4.2 square will equal negative 4 delta x. Divide both sides by negative 4. You should get delta x equals 4.4 rounded, which is around 4 meter. Okay. The last part of this question, g. The coefficient of static friction between the sledge and the snow, so this is static friction, this is a mu s. Outline with a calculation the subsequent motion of the sled. The subsequent motion it means will the sled continue moving up or the sled will move downward it will, or what happened exactly to the motion of the sled now in this case we need to see the forces acting on the sledge on the sled so here this is our sled just change the color okay i have this is the direction of motion it was moving upward with acceleration a down here I have the weight of the sled Fg. This weight I can break it down into component parallel to the surface. This is the vertical or the horizontal, sorry, the horizontal or x direction component. This is angle theta, so this will be Fg sine the angle. And the perpendicular component, perpendicular to the surface, this this is the same angle so this will be always fg cosine the angle theta opposite always to the direction of motion i have the friction so the friction it will be in this direction this is f static opposite to the direction of motion or opposite to the acceleration now we need to calculate these two components if, if the static friction 
is greater than the component of the weight in the horizontal direction or in the x direction this is x direction and this is y direction so it's greater than fg sine theta that means that means the slit won't move the slit won't move okay so let's let's calculate the component first of fg f g sine theta f g the mass of the slit 5.5 times 10 so it will be 55 sine 6.5 and this will give me 6.2 newton static friction equals mu s coefficient of static friction times the normal force and this is given to us which is 0.14 normal force normal force we've calculated from here normal force was 54.64 newton so 54.64 and this will give us 7.6 Newton. So as you notice, Fs greater than the component of the weight in the horizontal in the horizontal direction or parallel to the surface so the slit won't move. Okay, we still have time. We can start with question number eight. So question number eight, here you have Part of a downhill ski course starts at point A. The height is 50 meter above the ground. At point B, it's 20 meter above level ground. We have a skier. His mass, 65 kilogram, starts from rest at point A. And during the ski course, some of the gravitational potential energy is transferred off kinetic, to kinetic energy. Some it means part of this energy might be transferred to thermal energy, friction, due to the friction. So, section A, from A till B, 24% of the gravitational potential energy transferred to kinetic energy. Show that the velocity at B equals 12. We can use, since it's talking about energy, we can use conservation of energy. Initial energy at A will equal final energy at B. Initial energy at its only gravitational potential energy, gravitational potential energy. At P, it's moving. Okay, so... It's kinetic energy and it has high 20 meter above the ground so plus gravitational potential energy okay so this one it will be mgh will equal half m v square plus mg this is i can call it h1 and this is h2 this h1 and this is h2 I can take these together to the same side because both of them are gravitational potential energy and I can cancel the mass from both sides. So I will have G times delta H, delta H, it's H1 minus H2, will equal half V square. I need the velocity, cross multiplication, so V will be square root 2G times delta H and it will give me 2. G is 9.81 or 10 times delta H 50 minus 20. And this will give us 11.9 meter per second. I can round it to 12 meter per second. This is the velocity. Okay. Now, some of the gravitational potential energy transferred into internal energy, okay, because of the friction. 
slightly increasing their temperature. Distinguish between internal energy and temperature. This is from topic three. Internal energy, it's the kinetic energy plus the potential energy of the atoms or molecules, while a temperature is a measure of what? Of the kinetic energy of the molecule. So how I know that the temperature, if the temperature increase, if I see the molecules start to moving faster, they will collide with each other more, and that will increase the temperature of the object. C. Okay. Draw and label the vertical forces here at point B. I have two forces. I have the gravity, and this should be more than the normal force because this one is the one that is responsible for what? Both of them, of course, but this one is responsible for the centripetal, the centripetal force. Both of them, the resultant of both of them are responsible for the centripetal force. And we can prove this one here in part E, in part D, section D. Okay, let's calculate Fg First, Fg, it's mass times gravity. Mass of the sphere 65, gravity 9.8 or 10. I can use 10 for simplicity. So 650 Newton. Centripetal force, centripetal force is M times V squared divided by R, 65. Velocity, we just calculated, it is 12 squared divided by distance R, 12, 20 at point B, and this will give us 468. So the question, determine whether the skier lose contact with the ground, the skier will not lose contact. Why? Because the weight of the skier is greater than the centripetal, the centripetal force. What are the forces that equal to the centripetal force is the resultant force. Fg and a normal force together will give me the centripetal force. Okay? Sorry. E. Now the skier point, reach point C, let's do, it, do this one here. Okay? So I have here, this is A, B, and then, now this is point C, and then D, D here. This, from here till here, the distance is a 24 meter. Initial velocity of the skier here is 8.2 meter per second. And eventually it will stop. So here, final velocity will be zero. I need to calculate the coefficient of static friction two ways to solve this question. Either I can use work energy theorem, okay, and I can do it in one step, or I can use the kinematic equation, find the acceleration, and then use Newton's second law to calculate the uh, friction force, and from the friction force, we can calculate a new. So I can use work and energy theorem because it's easier and faster. So work energy theorem work will equal a change in kinetic energy. Since I have friction, so the for the uh, work now is done by the friction force. So I have the friction force times delta x equal half m delta v square. So this will equal f twenty four equal half m sixty five. Delta V square, 8.2 square minus zero. So 8.2 square. And then I can find F, divide both side by 25, 24. So F, the friction force is 91 in Newton. After that, we can use, so we'll, do, we'll go here, friction for Newton's second law. The friction for, here is the acceleration. Opposite to the acceleration, always we have what the friction. So the only force that is responsible for the acceleration is, friction, is this force. 
So this will equal mu times in normal force, and then we can find 